Bernard Tobin here at the London Farm Show, uh, catching up with Dan Helped from uh, Zimmer Ear Services, Inc. Sir, hey, thanks for yeah. taking the time and stopping. Thank you for having us. Thank you for coming visiting us at this great farm show. It's awesome. And uh, hey, you know, it's not too often we see helicopters inside, but I want to talk a little bit about your business. Obviously, you're flying um, great demand throughout the season, starting in the spring through the fall. Tell us a little bit about your business. Herbicides, fungicides, insecticides, a little bit of everything, I'm guessing, some seeding, maybe some cover crops. You know what? Uh, yeah, Zimmer Air, uh, and I'll just go back a little bit. Zimmer Air has been in business since 1975 now. Um, family owned and operated currently under Paul Zimmer. Um, yeah, and uh, hubbed in agriculture, also in forestry a little bit. Uh, and, and you name it, yes. We've gotten into everything from mosquito control yep. to, to for commercial applications to uh, forest defoliators in the cities. Um, but again, backboned and hubbed in the agricultural industry. So cover crops, uh, fungicides is a big uh, sector for us on the late stage crops, uh, fungicides even on wheat, on early stage wheat, uh, fertilizing, uh, especially in, in those wet years where the, the ground machines just are having some trouble getting in or, or causing a lot of comp compaction and so forth. So. Talk about, I guess, the, the makeup of your business. Um, is, it, is it a lot of it fungicides? Is that the biggest piece? Okay, yeah, so inevitably uh, fungicide is our, our biggest um, revenue stream, I guess I want to say, in, in agriculture. It's a very, very intense season. Our cells uh, getting into the 65, 70,000 acres uh, in that, what I want to call, three-week period, right? And so, uh, in corns, some soybeans in there as well. Yeah. So talk about, I mean, you, we were off here, we were talking about, hey, here's March, and April, you know, you really want to get people booking because, hey, you know, um, that preparation, that lead time is very important for you guys. It's tough to phone you up at the last minute and see if you can fly. And that's where the, our industry has really changed. If I talk to some of the, uh, you know, the, the, the old timers, I guess I want to say that have been in this business many, many years, uh, aviation, aerial applicators were always a uh, reaction to, uh, you know, to a pest in a crop or something. And we're beyond that. Much like uh, today's modern farmer has to pre-order equipment, pre-order seed, pre-order their chemical, uh, we're much the same boat. If we're going to get done what we need to get done in order to stay efficient and keep those prices down, we need to get those guys looking into the crystal ball and saying, all right, let's book, let's book our acres, sign us up. Uh, worst case scenario, we don't get it done if we have a crop failure or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but in most cases today, people are looking at it as an insurance policy. Yeah. And let's talk a little about about cover crops. Um, you know, really, you know, we've seen a real ramp up in cover crops in recent years. You can fly on co cover crops. How is that impacting your business? It's it's adding to our business. It adds the diversity that uh, that we supply in the industry. Um, so whether that's yeah cover crops and fertilizer that we do not with a spray tank like you have mm -hmm. here, but with a, a bucket. And, uh, and spreader system that uh, that hangs up the bottom of the helicopter. It's very accurate work. It's very delicate work. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's a. It, it's more and more in demand. We're seeing that uh, again. It comes in phases, and we're seeing that again here in the last few years, uh, coming back uh, where people are uh, wanting to to save their nitrogen, for mm -hmm. instance, uh, in that soil, and planting uh, rye into their corn mm -hmm. um, and what have you. Yeah, there's uh, clovers, rye. Um, let, you know other legumes and so forth as well. So. Let's talk about your fleet. Um, obviously, you've managed to get a, a helicopter here inside the, the building, yeah. which I guess isn't a big feat because we've got combines and everything else Absolutely. in here. Yeah. But uh, tell us about what you're flying, and uh, you know how it varies to I mean to, to Western Canada, where we see a lot more planes, right? Yep, yep. So in the mid '80s, we were uh, uh, pushed towards helicopters, both from agriculture in southern Ontario as well as our forestry sector. Um, we used to be a fixed wing operator back mm -hmm. in in the early days. Um, and helicopters we find are much more uh, accurate, much more efficient. We fly slower. We have some smaller fields in Ontario, not necessarily uh, runways at every street corner like they have in out west. They can just land on the road, right? Um, so we rely on having to bring our mix rig to, to, to the growers' fields mm -hmm. and fly, uh, in a lot of cases, right off the top of the mix rig. We have landing, landing pad right on top of the yeah. mix rig. Wow. So, so how's the, how's the technology changed over the years? Well, uh, GPS, that's no, all I can exactly. say, right? In a nutshell, and, and yeah. every, everybody here knows yeah. that. Uh, GPS is, is a big, big backbone. We can uh, accurately fly in, in any terrain, over any terrain, um, you know, within a, a foot uh, of accuracy. And, um, you know, it, when you, 
back in the old days, you used to have flagmen that stood in the field mm. with a flag and would you know move 50 or 60 feet over each pass, mm. uh, get doused in chemicals most likely. Uh, nowadays, we do that a lot safer. That GPS is a, a godsend. Mm. So final question for you: how, how big is your capacity? I mean, like how bad? How often do you have to go back? How much can you fly, whether it be a fungicide or a fertilizer, uh, before you have to return? Um, so this, our smallest helicopter, just as an example, uh, on a typical fungicide application will spray 15 acres. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it depends on your label rates a little bit, uh, but yeah, 15 acres is fairly typical. Uh, so yeah, we could be back at the truck reloading every, you know, three, four, five minutes. How does it compare to an overground sprayer from a time perspective? I mean, how fast can you do it? Yeah, productivity. Uh, quite a bit, I shouldn't say quite a bit more, mm -hmm. but in most fields, in most applications, yeah. quite a bit more. Right. Um, just because, I mean, we're, we're applying that product at 100 kilometers an hour. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and if we have that mixed rig uh, right beside us, then it sure doesn't take long. Uh, to do 100 acres in an hour is nothing. Awesome, awesome. Hey, well, thank you for taking the time. Uh, what I heard from you is, hey, if we want to book a flyer, we should be talking to you now, right? Talk now. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, there is some, it's getting better. There are some products that people want to put on that we need permits for. Right. And again, booking early, we make those permits. We're the ones that has to have those permits in our back right. pocket when we fly your property. Um, not a problem. We come out, we'll sit at your kitchen table, we'll map your fields for you, and uh, we'll have those permits in place just in case you need them. Awesome. Hey, Dan, thank you so much. Hopefully, the only thing that's flying right now is snow outside, and that'll be changing uh, pretty soon, yep. and you'll get up in the air. Thanks again. Yep, we're getting the itch. Thank you very much for having us. Oh.